Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Did you have uh, lunch yet? Did you have your breakfast? What did you eat? What's going on with your diet? We're going to talk about all of that, what you should be eating, what you shouldn't be eating, and intermittent fasting seems to be a thing now, so we're going to dig into that. There's lots to talk about here. We haven't talked in so long, and it's so great to have her back here. She's a licensed dietitian, clinical nutritionist. She's a health coach, and she's also the keto nutritionist. And she's back with us. Christina Hess is on the program. Hey, Christina, how you doing? Hey, Steve. It's good to be back. It's good to uh, see you on Zoom. Yeah, and I'm glad you can't see what I did have for lunch because I'm not proud of it, and it was a last-minute choice, and I won't even tell you the carb count. Whether whether you're looking for a low carb, it just it, it it wasn't good. But we'll just go past that. I'm staring at it. I didn't finish it, so I saved some of those carbs. But um, let's I, talk about carbs, though. Are all um, carbs bad? No, no. These are, trust me. These 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 are this bread carbs. Bread carbs. Lots. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I think even you know bread carbs that you know there's different qualities of bread. There, um, you know, how many ingredients does your bread have? Is it freshly baked? Is it, is it really processed? Has it been sitting on the shelf for two weeks and then you take it home and it's got a whole bunch of ingredients you don't recognize? Um, are you, are you really exercising and utilizing that, that carbohydrate? Those would be kind of deeper questions to dive into, uh, with an individual, because everyone has different carbohydrate tolerance and, and different activity levels. And that's a really good way to assess, you know, someone's utilization, you know, whether they need as many carbohydrates or not. Interesting that we're going down the carb road here because we talked about <laughs> bread and I bought a loaf of white bread. Hold on. For my daughter, she asked for it. She never ate it. Fortunately, it's so cheap. Like, you know, a buck 79, but right. it, it sat there. It went past the expiration date, way past it. You know, I pick up, I didn't open it up. So it didn't hit the air, but I looked at it and I'm like, this looks okay. And it was almost like a science experiment. I let it go. I wanted to see what was going to happen to it. I went probably a month past the expiration date. And, and did it turn moldy or not? No, or? no, it, no it did not, which is, Kind of surprising, but also scary at the same time. Yes, yes. Food should expire. It should it should start growing mold. That means it's fresh and doesn't have all those preservatives. So that is pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you know, <laughs> she was joking the other day and said uh, in the cabinet, there was stuff left over from summer. And, you know, she wanted some snacks. <laughs> you know, it changes from, you know, week to week, whatever. Um, but they were Twinkies in there and they expired, I believe in August. And there was like two left and she goes, why we throw these out They're just expired. I'm like, I don't think I have to. <laughs> I don't think Twinkies expire, which is really, really frightening. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think there's been, people have done that. They've saved Twinkies for like 10 years and they seem to be perfectly okay. On the other side though, I bought lettuce, shredded lettuce in a bag and, you know, just make a sandwich or whatever salad. And two days it, it started turning brown and yep. I looked at the package and it actually said use within two days of opening but then mm -hmm. other lettuce I've had similar just a different brand mm -hmm. had it for I don't know like a week week and a half w what's the difference what am I missing here well, it could, it could have a lot to do with um, when it was picked, how long, you know, was it shipped from far away? Uh, was your lettuce bagged or not? I mean, there are all these different questions, right? We don't always know how long something's been sitting in, in that produce aisle uh, before we buy it. So you really don't know yeah. unless you're growing your own stuff, um, how many days have actually gone until it's it's going to expire so it's 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 a really it's a tricky one it's happened to the best of us yeah uh, buying it, something and then it's just dead the next day is is frozen frozen fruit okay 
Yeah. Frozen. There's technology now to preserve uh, nutrients through through freezing. So, uh, you know, a, a nice balance is, is good between fresh and frozen. But certainly um, fro- frozen frozen veggies and frozen fruits are 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 great. Okay. I, I always wondered about that um, because I find that I buy stuff and it goes bad too fast before I get to eat it. And then I see it frozen. It's cheaper. Mm-hmm. And if it, it lasts longer, obviously. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get into intermittent fasting. Got a couple of friends have been doing it. We hear a lot about it. What's the benefits? What's the downside? Yeah, so fasting, fasting is is very strong medicine in that when you give give the body a break from digestion, mm-hmm. which is a very expensive thing mm-hmm. for the body to do, um, it requires a lot of energy to digest food. It's good to go from time to time by giving the body a body rest and um, you know just completely giving it a, a day of of not eating, um, maybe sometimes longer, and that is what true intermittent fasting is. We we we've confused intermittent fasting with something called time restricted eating which is kind of closing your eating window or do or practicing an eating window. Maybe you're doing a 16, eight, maybe you're doing um, something smaller, like an 18, six. Um, But I think also a lot of folks, myself included, I'm guilty of this um, overdid or overdoing time restricted eating. It, it, it's really, um, you know, intermittent fasting, which is occasionally going from a 24 hour to 48 hour, 72 hour fasting practice of, you know, water and salt, or maybe it's just uh, coffee, water, maybe some broth, something like that. You can't really do a three day fast all that regularly, nor would that be recommended. But time restricted eating, if you're just constantly doing, you know, a six hour eating window or um, a one hour eating window where you're eating one meal a day and then you're not eating enough food regularly, your body's going to adapt to that and your metabolism will slow and may downregulate your thyroid. So, um, just like everything, maybe there was a strat it, you used. Uh, an eating window for either um, weight loss or for improving your relationship with food. Um, But eventually it might be beneficial to open the window back up, right? Um, And and do a nice balanced 12 hour eating window practice, maybe wider, maybe 13 hours. How do you get through that? Yeah, because I don't know if I, uh, me personally, I I don't know if I could do not eating for that amount of time. And yeah. I, I think a lot of people may may agree. Oh, for sure. Um, now, most people, when they're first starting out, they don't jump into a 24-hour fast. They might just delay breakfast by an hour or two. And breakfast being breaking fast. So you're either in a fed state or fasted state. And um, when you wake up in the morning, you're in a fasted state. You haven't eaten probably for hopefully eight hours. And um, and there are some folks that say we shouldn't eat in the first hour of being awake and we should wait. Um, so that's, you know, I don't have hard data on that. But um it's just, it's just, uh, do you have the ability to delay and then to shut down the kitchen in the evening? And, and that's really enough. I mean, if you, if, if you practice 12 hours of not eating and 12 hours of eating, having your three meals a day inside of that 12 hours, that's what I call healthy and balanced eating. Hmm. You know, it's just when, when someone is kind of foraging for food at midnight 
and then going to bed. That's not, it's not the best practice um, for your digestive system, for your metabolism. Uh, we really should be done eating two to three hours before we go to sleep. Uh, our body, our body needs to kind of clear the clear the food out of our stomach before we lie down, and that will prevent you getting acid reflux and and other issues. So what I'm hearing here sounds very easy to do, I would think, in terms yeah. of delaying your breakfast. So if you have breakfast every day, let's say at seven o'clock, next day move it to eight. How how far up on that window would you go? Just to, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is the process for that, how that works. Well, some people um, practice it like that, and eventually they don't eat an, until noon, right? And they have their first, they break fast at noon, and and they they, they close their window and have their last bite of food. Kitchen is closed eight o'clock at night, and that would be an eight hour, a very popular eight hour eating window. Um, I, I, I tend to recommend to my clients, uh, that they stop eating by seven, just because, um, your metabolism does slow in the evening as your body's preparing for sleep. So, uh, it, it's especially for active people getting their workout in, in the morning, I would prefer that they break their fast earlier in the morning and then finish eating earlier in the evening. I find that everything is habit because I never used to snack before bed. And then I just found myself <laughs> doing it. And, you know, every day it's like, ah, ah just a little bit. Yeah, it'll be okay. After a while, it's like, what the heck am I eating? Why am I doing this? <laughs> like, what happened here? Because it's habitual and you're, you're in the routine of doing it. Yeah. And nature pours a vacuum. So when you're trying to establish a new habit, you almost need to, you have to replace the thing you're doing. Maybe instead of hmm. food, it's, it's a cup of tea, or maybe it's change up the location. If you're hanging out, lingering in the living room downstairs, maybe you take yourself up to the bedroom or you take a shower, you know, you just have to replace the one habit with a different habit. Thank you for saying that because <laughs> Honestly, I bought tea a week ago. Never drink tea. I didn't want to I worry about caffeine at night. I can't do caffeine anytime during the day. And I, I found no caffeine, you know, chamomile, whatever, to make you sleep better. Um, put it in the cabinet, totally forgot about it. So now I'm going to replace that little snack at night with the tea. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Absolutely. Um, I have a very big sweet tooth. So I have liquid stevia that I, I put in my herbal tea and my chamomile, mm. and it gives me a little feeling of sweet. You know, some people like honey in their tea. So instead of having the sugar, I just put a couple of drops of stevia. It sweetens my tea and I have my cup of hot and sweet tea. Yeah. So for those of you who don't like that, that's great. But for those of you who need that sweet, instead of having the sugar right before bed, use uh, my hack is liquid stevia, which doesn't bother me. Um, stevia glycerate has no aftertaste. So just a couple drops and you have a nice sweet tea. Yeah, love that. And uh, I visited a friend back in October and he had that. He had that you know, liquid stevia. I tried it for the first time and he was like, this is great. This is magical. And I don't put any sweetener in anything ever. Not even time. Right. That's great. That's However, even better. That's even better because some people who use those sweeteners they say it triggers them to want to eat more mm. or um, they, they end up really reliant. Um, for me, it's just a nice swap and it's guilt-free. So I think go with your personality on that one. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also, uh, I'm still snacking at night and that's the, you know, the sweet <laughs> so this is going to replace that. And I totally get what you're saying. Cause so many people think they're on a diet, drink diet soda. So first of all, you're getting, you're, ingesting chemicals and it's making you want to eat anyway, but you don't realize it. It does something. Well, something I would ask you, Steve, is make sure you're eating enough food during the day because maybe you're, you didn't eat enough food and this is your body signal uh, telling you you're not 
you're not satiated, you didn't eat enough and you need more calories in your body. So you're looking for snacks at, at the wrong time. And then the second thing I would encourage you to take a look at is, did you have enough protein during the day? Protein is the, is the body's most important macronutrient. And we're finding now that the recommended dietary allowance of you know 0.8 grams per kilogram of weight is way too low. Um, it, it, we really should be eating closer to a gram per body weight. So that, that might be too much for a really, really overweight person, but um, we really need a lot more protein than what, what the general pop is, is, is eating. Wow. And getting more protein means you're not just crowding out, uh, you know, other sort of maybe not as nourishing foods, but it means your, um, your blood sugar is going to be nice and steady. Your, um, your brain is going to get the amino acids it needs to make neurotransmitters and feel calm and happy, um, you know, relieving depression and anxiety. And, you know, just keep in mind essential amino acids. We need those for life. We have essential fatty acids, it's, it's the carbohydrate that we can lever up or lever down. There are no essential carbohydrates. So that is all very, very much dependent on lifestyle and athletic performance is how much carbohydrate do we need in the diet. But the other two macronutrients are absolutely essential and protein is uh, really, really under eaten, I think. Um. Before we change gears, I want to talk about uh, menopause and premenopause diets. Before we hit that, though, the amount of protein again, let's say somebody weighs 150 pounds. What should yep. they eat? How much protein in a day? If they, if they can get as close to 150 grams of protein, if they weigh 150 pounds, uh, that is excellent. That's what, you know, I, that's what I thought you said. <laughs> I, yes. that. And if I bet it's a lot more than the average woman who weighs 150 pounds is, is eating. For and sure. if, we, if she did eat that much protein, she wouldn't be able to fit in crackers and other, you know, and popcorn and kind of fluff foods that are not adding any value. Okay. Through her life, especially during perimenopause and menopause, we it, like perimenopausal women. I'm I'm one, so it it there's so many um, hormonal changes happening, and um, but to be honest, even for a woman in her fertile years, the protein is so essential, and and there's so many women out there with you know, fertility issues, if, if we really just bumped up our protein, um, a lot of things would get taken care of. How much protein could you, or should you have per meal? And where I'm going with that is, can yeah. you body process it? Can, can you do 40 grams of protein in one Absolutely. meal? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hmm. So I would say minimum on the low end, 30 grams and on the higher end, 60. Really? See, I had heard in the past that uh, your body's not going to use it, process it. Right. right. That's old information. Wow. Wow. And it's, you know, I'm glad we're talking about this because I have this conversation with friends who are women all the time in terms of the protein. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell me, you know, yeah, I just ate this before. I'm like, look at the package. How much protein is in that? Oh, it's got, mm, let me see here, uh, six grams. I'm like, why? No, <laughs> it's just not enough. Exactly. It's, it's, it's not remotely enough. So for any, um, and I favor low carb and I specialize in keto, but keto is not for everybody. It is very low carb and is, it's good for, you know, autoimmune issues or cancer or um, severe insulin resistance. But so for the average 
regular folks um, who are active, you know, right, relatively healthy, they really should prioritize the protein. <laughs> so, uh, we have UPS now. Oh, I, I don't even hear them. I don't, don't even worry about it. I don't, don't Masi, even... Masi, please lie down. No. And, um, and so if we prioritize the protein and we get 30 to 50 grams per meal, the rest of the plate can really take care of itself. You add your, you know, if you add your vegetables and you need a little dessert or something after, but prioritize that protein and then add what you prefer to eat on the side. Hmm. But really, really, th everyone should be focusing on what proteins do I like to eat? And am I hitting my 30 to 50 grams? So I, I, I think it's reasonable from what you're saying to expect the protein to be the foundation of your meal. It, should really, it really should be, and it's very counter to uh, what we're hearing with, you know, plant-based communities, um, uh, especially the more, you know, vegan folks that, you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be eating animal protein. And I 100% disagree with mm -hmm. that. Uh, it's very, very hard for us to hit our protein requirements um, without eating any animal protein. Uh, so if you are a vegetarian, it's just harder. You know, it's, you can, if you're ovo lacto or you're pescatarian, you have to just be very mindful how you're, how you're hitting those targets and you can do it, but, um, but you really have to be focused. Otherwise, you know, things can fall apart. You want to watch your, your hormone levels, your mood, um, you know, are, are, are things falling apart or is your hair falling out or your nails getting brittle? Um, and also are you eating enough? You know, uh, one of the biggest mistakes, especially I see women making, um, especially women my age who are trying to lose weight is that they'll overcorrect by really under eating or stop eating. They restrict themselves all day. And then sort of the you know, oh, I, I didn't eat until, you know, four and then all hell breaks loose and you are just down regulating everything and slowing your metabolism. So if you, if you can focus on a healthy relationship with food, you know, eat three square meals that are prioritized with protein, um, you're just like winning the game and you won't, you won't do crazy things to your metabolism. I'm a big fan of protein. I try to have as much as possible in meals. People make fun of me, friends, family, you know, like, boy, you gotta have more protein. Yes, I do. And <laughs> my aha moment was like, hmm, like 25 years ago, I would eat like a lot of carbs, you know, pasta, donuts. <laughs> didn't even, th didn't know about the protein thing until yeah. once I went to an Italian restaurant had lots of pasta, had ice cream for dessert, went home, felt horrible, passed out. Oh, wow. Food coma. <laughs> and that was my wake-up call. And I just wasn't feeling right. Of course, you know, got tests and everything. Everything was okay. And one day I was going fishing with my friend and went to a convenience store, picked up a sandwich, lots of uh, meat on the sandwich, ate it. And I'm like, I feel much better. I feel good. What's going on? And then I made the connection. And since that day, and I remembered vividly, protein is so key. And that's why I'm shocked to hear that we have to even have more protein, you know, because I, I I try to set the goal of like at least 20 grams per meal, whatever it is. Good. Good. Bump it up, though. Bump it up. though. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Oh, I'm glad we talked today. <laughs> like yeah, a me too. Me too. I mean, there are some people like genetically... Um, we've talked, we've talked about this in the past is, you know, genetic testing and nutrigenetics and, and how nuanced it can get with, you know, everyone's a bio individual and we do have different genetics and genetic potential. Hmm. Some people really, you can see it in their gene profile. They need high protein. Um, nobody needs low protein that doesn't work for anybody. 
Um, but some people have higher protein requirements. They have higher omega-3 requirements. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with things like coffee, where you know that you just, you're crazy, um, you can see it in the genetic profile that, yeah, some, you know, you don't metabolize caffeine well and it's void. So, um, you know, but without doing any genetic testing, you know, someone listening to this should experiment with uh, it bumping up their protein because what's been shown in recent studies is that um, older women especially um, can recomposition their body without exercise just by uh, boosting the protein alone, which is absolutely incredible. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I know you are available if somebody wants to change their life, literally change your life by changing yeah. diet or just learn some of those different things. You are a licensed dietitian, clinical nutritionist. They reach out to you. How do they find you, by the way? Yeah, um, so they can find me through um, like one of my two websites, thriveresultscoaching.com. Um, and then if they're looking for more low carb, something ketogenic, uh, keto, the keto nutritionist.com. And there's a booking link on each, each one of those, uh, pages. Excellent. And a free consult. If somebody wants to just learn more, kind of get on the same page with you. No free consult, unfortunately, but I can hop on a, you know, quick five minute call just to see if it's a good fit. If they want to proceed, um, I offer 60 or 90 minute consultations. Excellent. All right, Christina, great talking with you. Uh, learned a lot today in a very short amount of time. And again, can be life-changing if you just feel things aren't right. Change up that protein and uh, some of the other stuff we talked about. I appreciate it. And uh, look forward to next time we talk. I appreciate you, Steve. Thank you. Be well. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.